Sam. Um, Pam Mendelson. Okay. And which pronouns do you prefer to be called by? Uh, she. She. Okay. That's I great. guess. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? I got involved with the disability rights movement. Um, hold on. Let me think. In 1978. Okay. And when I went to work for the Center for Independent Living, um, and Ed was not there then, um, and, but Judy Human was there. And mm -hmm. anyway, so um, then I worked for uh, the World Institute on Disability, which is where I met Ed in 1992. Mm -hmm. And we had a, uh, we won a USAID project to do work mm -hmm. in the former Soviet Union. Wow. And, yeah. And at first they, they rejected our proposal. And after we got over the idea that they rejected us, we thought, well, why did they reject us? This is ridiculous. So we actually protested the rejection and won the proposal. Mm -hmm. And um, I, when I went to work for the World Institute on Disability, I'll call it WID. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I was the um, public education and media specialist. Okay. I got very involved in the Russia project. And so when I really got to know Ed was when we went to the former Soviet Union together. Really? Oh, yes. Oh, boy. And I do have stories. So and then um, after I worked for WID, I worked for Through the Looking Glass. I, do you know that um, organization? No, I've never heard of it. Okay, well, that's an organization in Berkeley as well. And what they do is they, they um, advocate for parents with disabilities. Mm. Yeah, so, um, and that's led by Megan Kirschbaum mm -hmm. and still is. Um, and uh, then... What happened? Well, then I got cancer bad, a, yeah. a terrible cancer. And so I was out of commission for quite, you know, for a while. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was 21 years ago that this happened. Mm -hmm. um, and I went back to the former Soviet Union. I went back to Moscow to lead a workshop for um, disabled and non-disabled youth. Okay. Um, and it, it was a photography project where kids were paired up with each other, disabled and non-disabled. And I designed this curriculum where they were working together. And, um, oh, it, it was fantastic. I mean, you know, the divisions just melted. They did fabulous photography. It was great. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention is I went to Russia something like 18 times in the 90s. Wow. Yeah, Russia, but Kazakhstan and the former and, and, you know, the Ukraine, all these different places. And um, so... What I was doing was workshops on how to use the media as an agent for social change. Mm -hmm. And it was very, um, very exciting because, you know, people in those countries never had access to the media. But okay. They, yeah, but they did starting in like 1992 you know, when, when things changed. And so the idea was to 
um, figure out how they could be in touch with the media and get their stories out. So I love that. That was that was just great. Yeah, that sounds great. And you met Ed Roberts in 1992, you told me? Yes, I met him yes. in 1992. And in what context? You were working together? Yeah, I went to work for the World Institute on Disability, uh -huh. and he was the head of it. That's, that's great. And can you give me like three words that you think would describe him? Yes. Um, inspiring, okay, which is what I would say non-disabled people felt about okay. him. Oh, he's so inspirational and um, motivating, which is how I think people with disabilities felt about him. I mean, they would meet him and they, they, then they really felt motivated to, to affect change, mm -hmm. okay? And the third thing is well-spoken. He, um, see, it's good you gave me the questions ahead of time because I had to think about <laughs> it. So um, he really knew how to speak in a warm way, with lots of information okay. and um, in a way that motivated people. Great. And can you tell me what were your impressions of him? Like what was his personality like? Well, he was, um, I'm sure that this, this project has heard this before, but, <laughs> uh, he described himself as an artichoke, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, soft on the inside and prickly on the outside, okay? Um, he, he um, I never saw him get angry, you know? Okay. Um, uh, he, he motivated people um by speaking uh what um he was very welcoming so what was the question again his per oh my impression of your him. impression and what was his personality like well yeah i think that that's the answer to the question okay uh earlier you said like uh can that you had a lot of stories. Can you tell me a story about him? Oh, that you I've been like, an idea of what he was. I've been looking forward to telling you the story. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we were in Moscow together, mm -hmm. and when we went to Moscow, the number of power wheelchairs increased from two power wheelchairs. Okay to three. The mm -hmm. other two were in institutions. Okay. So no one really ever saw anybody in a power wheelchair out on the street. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine what that was like to see Ed racing around. So one day we went to a place called Zagorsk, Z A. G O R S K. Okay. Okay. And it was a, 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 a spiritual place. I think you would call it a religious place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, we were running around out there, and um, people would come up to me and they would say, Oh, we're so sorry about your husband. I would say, he's not my husband. He's my boss. Oh, oh, how could that be, right? Mm -hmm. So we're out there. And, and um, these 
women came up to him, you know, kind of old women like I am now, okay? And they and they and they they looked at him and they wanted to cure him, okay? They really wanted to cure him and they felt that they could. Okay. So they one woman lifted his hand off of his joystick and picked it up and kissed his hand. And then of course she let it go because she didn't realize that his hand was just going to fall. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he grabbed the joystick and he zoomed off. Well, <laughs> anyway, that was the first thing that happened. While he was zooming off, a raven who weighed about 35 pounds dumped a load of you-know-what on his head. No okay. way. So <laughs> poor Ed <laughs> had this stuff all over him. And the ladies raced after, and they were cleaning him <laughs> up. And one of them said, well, thank God the cows don't fly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was one story about Ed that, mm -hmm. I, that I will always remember. That was really something. Yeah, that sounds like he was really something. Yes. What wisdom did Ed pass on you? That it's important to be humorous. Mm -hmm. You can't be all the time. You can't be earnest. You can't be, uh, you know, that getting people to laugh is good. For example, when I, I got him on Russian television, okay? And... Mm -hmm. Um, first, when they came, they said, I said, well, there's Ed Roberts. He's the head of our, um, the World mm -hmm. Institute on Disability. They said, well, you don't expect us to interview him. How can we interview him? You know, because he had his uh, respirator, whatever it was, respirator. And I said, well, you're not going to interview me. You, of course you can interview him. So they interviewed him. And um, one thing he said that I loved was he said, I really don't want the babushkas, that's the older women, okay. to feel sorry for me. <laughs> they, there's no reason to feel sorry for me. And there's, there's no reason that that people with disabilities can't have the same rights as everybody else. But, you know, he did it with humor. Okay. So anyway. And you have, you know, that legacy that he left you, have you applied it in your life in general after? Well, that's kind of an interesting question right. because when I, um, When I almost died from cancer, okay, I used the disability rights way of thinking, okay, mm -hmm. about the world of cancer. So there mm -hmm. I was in a very different situation from my normal situation. And I decided that as long as I was going to be in the world of cancer, I was going to learn the customs. I was going to learn the language. I was going to, you know, read the roadmaps. And I think that this is very much how people with disabilities, I mean, how Ed would Ed died before I got cancer. And I think that that's what Ed would have said to me is, okay, you're in this other world now and you're also 
you're not just in that world. You live in two worlds. Mm -hmm. Oh, learn about it. So I think that's it. That sounds amazing. Did you ever knew why he chose to become an activist? Oh, come on. You know why he chose to become <laughs> an activist? <laughs> Because he he um he learned to advocate for himself. Well, his mother is a fierce advocate, okay? okay. And she, you know, is still around and going strong. Um, and she's 101, I think now. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, so um, he learned to advocate for himself. Now, the Department of Rehabilitation in mm -hmm. Sacramento said that Ed would never, ever be able to work. I mean, he was just, mm -hmm. you know. So he became the head of the Department of Rehabilitation. And I mean, he was just, it was just part and parcel of him. He was one of the first students to go with disabilities to go mm -hmm. to UC Berkeley. And he had to live in the infirmary because he had an iron lung. And mm -hmm. Some other guys also with severe disabilities lived in um, the infirmary and they started advocating. And then when they graduated, they rolled down the block and founded the Center for Independent Living. Okay. And do you know, like he was always that kind of person that didn't always wanted the rights for him, but for everyone? Do you know why yeah. he was always like that? It was his personality. Sounds, sounds like a great person, to be honest. Yes, he was a great person. How did Ed find or create, or he had to create the support in the disability community? Uh, how did he do that? Do you know that if he, when he started, he had any support from the disability community or he had to create his own? Well, support? I don't think there was a disability community okay. for Ed. You know, um, there were people advocating mm -hmm. uh, for themselves, um, but he was very involved with making the community, creating a community. I mean, you know, there's disability culture, there's, you know, um, I mean, he was very involved in creating that community. Mm -hmm. And in which way, I mean, why his idea of creating community was so powerful that Even in 2021, we're talking about it. What do you think? Well, first of all, I think it's wonderful that there is this youth project talking about Ed. Because, you know, if you go to the UC campus now, the mm -hmm. UC Berkeley campus, people don't really know who Ed Roberts is. Okay? They don't, I mean, the disability, the disabled students don't know who he is. In a way, that's fine. I mean, Ed would not be offended because yeah. Berkeley is so integrated now that, but I wish they did know about Ed, okay? But, but um, anyway, what was the question? <laughs> I, no, I was just thinking, why... Did oh. his idea of creating community was so strong that we because because so many people were waiting mm -hmm. to join together. That's why. That's a powerful sentence. Yes. <laughs> yes. And what do you think us like the youth should be advocating to carry on Ed's legacy? What do you think we should be doing? 
exactly what you're doing right now. Okay. I really do. I was so excited to hear about this. And I think that one thing that has been cons of concern to many of the older people involved in the disability rights movement is, are there young people who are going to carry on the, the, the legacy? Are, you know, will there be? I mean, uh, at one point, Judy Human said when she was involved with the um, special education and rehabilitation department at uh, U.S., whatever it was, okay, well, under Clinton, she said, well, you know, someday maybe we won't need to have a department of special education and rehabilitative services because it'll be done. It will, it, it will all happen. I don't think it's going to happen like that, but, but, you know, it would be great. And I think that people like you are going to help make this happen. Thank you so much. And what would you think would be Ed's dream for the disability community nowadays? That you, that the young people carry on. That's what I think his dream would be. And what would be your dream? Same. Same. <laughs> yeah. That. That was amazing. And I think we're done. So I would, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>